Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the dictionary and lists. We're going to go ahead and work on this so we just can get make sure we get a good understanding of this early in our game since this is a fairly new compact com fairly new. We're going to make sure we get familiar with this early uh, because this is a fairly new concept that we haven't talked about in our, any of our videos before. So let's start with lists. In other videos, we've talked about uh, variable types, strings, numbers, uh, Boolean, but this is also considered a variable type of list. This is a variable type. I'm trying to get it all caps without it hitting. So we'll make a list one. This is the name of our list. And it's going to be equal to now is how we are able to tell how it's a list because it looks a little bit different than any other than any other variable that we've used before. We open and close our list with brackets. So a list is going to be a bunch of different objects into one. In this case, we're just going to do numbers and strings. We'll make our list and then we'll give some examples of how this works. So we're going to do just the letter A. Uh, we'll do a lowercase letter B. We'll do some numbers, uh, 5 and 9. And we'll end with a letter uppercase C. Now let's see what happens when we print this list. When we print this list, we get at the very top all of our contents, contents from our list, and it also includes the brackets. So we're actually printing this entire list. We see the F capital A, lowercase b, 5, 9, and then we see an uppercase c. Uh, what I want to do really quick is I want to set roll again equal to no. Uh, I want to just print the list so that we're not confused with what is happening down here. In a list, we can also pick certain items that we want to display. For example, let's say we want to just print the last letter C. What we would do is we would open and close with the square bracket and we would put in the item index is what it's called. So in order to kind of understand how indexing works, we can kind of write numbers at the top to remember which number belongs to what item. So our first is index 0. Our second is index 1. That's a lowercase b. Our index at 2 would be the number 5. Our index at 3 would be the number 9. And that means, lastly, our index at 4 would be the uppercase letter C. So when we go to look for the letter C, we want to print the uppercase letter C. We would say, I would like to print list 1, index 4. That's the item that I want to print. Let's see what happens. We print just the letter C. And we can do this with all the other ones as well. We can do 0. That would bring us the letter A, uppercase. Uh, we can do 3. That would bring us the number five, oh, the number nine, zero, one, two, three, the number nine. Uh, we can also play around now because these are just the variable. We can assume that this is equivalent to saying the number nine. So we can do things like list one at item number three plus list one at item number two. And what would we expect? 14, because this is kind of saying 9 plus 5. We again are getting the list a number 3 and adding it to the list number 2 index. So this is kind of saying it's 5 plus 9. That's why we have 14. So just remember for lists, these start with 0. 0 is the first, 1 is the second, and that and so on. That's how it starts. It's called zero based indexing and these are the indexes so again a belongs to zero one belongs to b 
2 belongs to 5, and so on. And this is the concept of a list. This is how list works. Let's have one more list, list 2. And let's say we have a couple things in here. So we have list one, A, B, five, nine, C. List two is the phrase, I love. Next phrase, Python, a character of zero and a number of zero. We can actually add lists to each other. Let's print the list individually first. List one, list two, and let's go ahead and print list one plus list two. Let's see what happens. So list one, we see the AB 59C. List two, we see the I love Python, a character zero and a number zero. And the last print is actually list one plus list two, and we see them both combined here. So this could be equal to just one list. It's combined of both the lists. Lists are used in order to have many different objects kind of combined in one area. We can think maybe even like uh, a box. This is a box of items that we're just kind of storing and passing around. Could be many different things, and so it's very dynamic how you can use a list, but generally it's to hold a bunch of different objects. It could even be the same type of object just so you can use them later. And we're gonna take a look at kind of an example. We're gonna use a type of list in our code now. This is called a dictionary. Dictionary, spelling dictionary, I think it's right. So let's make a dictionary. Dictionaries are going to look a little different. Dictionaries have squiggly brackets instead of squares. And dictionary uses something called keys and values. So let's make our dictionary first and then we'll discuss it. We'll have number one. This is going to equal doesn't like food. Number two is going to equal I want more food. And let's see what happens when we print this dictionary. So we see here dictionary at the bottom it looks a little different I love food I want more food for number two and the reason that it looks so different is because you access those objects or those strings differently what does this mean that means when we say hey I just want to print out this one number two usually in a list you would pick a index and you would say this is the number of the index that I want to print out Let's give an example. So we print just the letter B in this case. So how do we print just this phrase, I want more food? In this case, we want to print out, it looks like maybe one, because it would be if we're following the same list, it would be zero and one. But if we actually print out number one, it says, I love food. It prints out the first one. So if we actually print out zero, we get an error. The error is telling us, hey, there is no key of zero. That's because in order to access a dictionary, you need to use it by referencing the key. So instead of having a list, zero, one, we actually have keys. In this case, the key one unlocks I love food, and key number two 
unlocks I want more food. So instead of using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's not an index. It's actually a key. So what we could do is we could say key 5 and key, we could say 10. So if we want to print out I want more food, we would actually type in access key number 10. Key number 10 goes to the dictionary. What's the value for this key number 10? The value is this string, and that's what we print out. So you can use this with any type of number. You can do 500. We're, we're talking about uh, numbers in this case. This is how we use a dictionary as a key. We type in 10 for the dictionary key, and it says that there's an error with the key because this key doesn't exist. But let's add a key. Let's say key 10 is going to equal dice roller game. Now if we print the dictionary, we go to key 10, we have a value. The value is dice roller game. So we're going to use this relationship of key value in our dice game. So how do we use this? This is going to be used for the art. We're going to make one variable dice art and it's going to be equal to a dictionary. I'm going to copy this art. So the phrase, the string, is actually just going to be a picture of the dice. And you may wonder, this is kind of weird, the backslash n, this means that it's a new line. So if you want to force a new line, you could do backslash n. Now, whenever we print our random number, instead of printing a random number, we're actually going to say print that dictionary key. Dice art. Random number. We're going to take these out for now to just demonstrate how this would work. Oh, my roll again. Roll again is equal to no. We're going to set it equal to y. Now we have a picture of a random number. So a really quick recap of what exactly we're doing here. Instead of printing a random number, we're saying print a value that exists in this dictionary called dice art. So we go to dice art and dice art says, okay, well, I have these keys, number one, number two, number three, four, five, and six. And these keys are used to unlock the value, kind of like a, a room in a house. We would lock a door. When we use this key, we unlock a door to this value. In this case, it's a string but we're kind of mimicking a picture. Our random number generates a three in this case. So we say dice art, please get me the value of your number three room. We go to dice art. Dice art says my number three unlocks this door. So this is what I'm going to return to you. This is now the value. And that is what we are printing. In this way, it's kind of like an illusion of an art that's being uh, printed for the user, but it's kind of a way that we can use a dictionary in order to show something other than the number three. For emphasis, we're also going to just print whatever that random number was. So we got a number six. That's what we're printing right here. Right after we print the dice art, we print what that number was. And that number six uses this key to unlock this value. And this is what's returned, what's in between the parentheses. We can do it again. Two. A two would unlock this room. We can use it, we'll say uh, this room. Uh, this key now gives us this value. 
Uh, so you may be wondering again, let's try doing it without the backslash n. Let's say we want to do a number one. So we have number one, we're going to take away the backslash n just to show what would happen. We're going to force it to dice roll number one. And we see kind of it looks a little weird. It's because we were losing our new line. We're not really able to control it. Here we go again. This is kind of smushing it all on the same line. So the backslash n is important in order to make sure that we have a new line and that way it gives us a little more control as to how we want to display this. I am going to take out the uh, parentheses um, since we kind of didn't really talk about it. It's kind of a way just to stay a little bit more organized if you have parentheses um, so you can kind of know where something starts and where it ends. But in this case, it's not really needed. I'm going to take out the parentheses because we didn't really talk about it, and this still works. So we're going to put our random in one more time. Again, our random number is just whatever the random randint generates for us, and we're going to run it. So now what we have is we have the ability to use a dictionary, and this dictionary is just calling those strings, uh, returning strings, and it just looks like dice. Just for emphasis, we can do this one more time. Let's do number six. What we can put here is six. So when we roll a number six, it's just returning a string. So the dice art is just characters, it's just, just string, but it's kind of formatted in a way that it makes it look like it's an actual picture of a dice. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section below. I will respond to you. I'm sorry if this video kind of went a little longer than <clears throat> our usual videos, uh, but it's important to see how the lists work and hopefully using the list and dictionary in our code actually kind of shows and demonstrates a real life application of using something like this. So again, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you guys at the next video.